Church of Bernalillo. I'm hoping that uh, you come back to because of the Bible study we had yesterday or the devotional. Um, but I want us to continue the thought process that we started yesterday. Um, you know, we we this word with Pastor Al. You know, I like I said, it, it builds every day during the week based on some of the things that I talked about Sunday in my sermon. And <clears throat> Sunday we were talking about uh, the church at Ephesus and. You know, we brought out the fact that Jesus asked that church, you you know, he, he, he stated that you have left your first love. And he just more or less asked the question, do you love me? And some of the things that I brought in my message, you know, and, and the first point, you know, he knows your works. I had I'd made the statement that we have a resolve uh, against evil. And yesterday we talked about restraint from the things like self and the world and Satan. Um, and if you've done that, if you've chosen to restrain from those things, uh, I hope that means that you've chosen to love Jesus. And I just want to ask you another question. You know, Jesus asked the church, do you love me? But I want to ask you a question today is, have you made up your mind to love Jesus? And if you have made up your mind to uh, to love Jesus and to live for him and to allow him to manifest himself through our us, the church, the individual bodies of the church, then we can look at the word that I want us to look at today, and that is resolve. Resolve is when you make your mind up. Uh, resolve is that extra um, allegiance, if you will, that you are determined and nothing's going to deter you from it. And if we restrain ourselves from uh, this, show our restraint to the, the ways of the devil, then if we love the Lord and we can be resolved to do what it is he has asked us to do. My verse for today is 1 Chronicles 16, 11. It says, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. And if we're going to oppose and restrain ourselves from the things of this world and, and just the evil one, um, and that's what he wants us to do. We're going to need his presence continually, and I pray that you would learn and to be resolved to seek it. Today, instead of having a bunch of different verses, I, I took a passage. I've done this a couple of times in the past, but 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 11 really stands out, and I want us to focus on some things that, it, that Peter says here. Now, Peter was the outspoken one, and Peter was the one that denied Jesus. And Peter was the one that Jesus asked there at the end before he ascended. He says, do you love me? And he says, you know I do. He says, feed my sheep. And those type things are the, the very reason that we have to have a resolve to love the Lord. And if you've chosen Jesus, I'm getting into Second Peter here, chapter 1, uh, you have divine power. Starting with verses 3 and 4, it says, his divine power has uh, granted to all uh, us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Um, just that right there, you know, if if we have decided, we have the resolve and have made our decide, made up our minds that we're going to be resolved to follow Jesus and to love Him. He gives us power. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The verses go on, it says, through the knowledge of him who called uh, us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us uh, precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become, now get this, partakers of the divine nature. If you've got your Bibles out, underline that, partakers of the divine nature. That's God's nature. That's a holy nature. That's the nature that opposes our flesh. It says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. So if you want this divine power, you need to be resolved to follow Jesus. I'd made the statement Sunday that are, there are some that, you know, they say, well, I'm saved. I'm not going to hell. And that's all that matters. But I believe if Jesus was willing to die on the cross for us, that we might live. That if we would for, ask him to forgive us of our sins. And to change us. And, and all through the scripture, we see that. And we talked about this last uh, the week before last. Uh, oh, it was last week. We become a new creature. And that new creature needs to love the creator. Um, 
but we need to prove our resolve uh, to have more than just faith. Um, you know, so many people say, you know, I'm saved. I believe Jesus did all those things, but we got to have a little bit more than just that faith. Verses five and through seven says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement. And I want us to underline that. Make every effort to supplement. We'll come back to that. Your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. Now you read that and first off, you think about the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, but the fruit of the spirit, and here's the, the list there, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such there is no law. And that fruit of the spirit, if we have accepted Jesus as our savior, he indwells us. We become a new creature because we're born again. We have the spirit and these, this fruit, uh, these qualities of that fruit are there. Um, we have to understand that when we see in back to uh, second Peter, in verses five and seven, it gives us these lists. And now it is, it they're pretty close. And I believe that, you know, the spirit of God is in us, but it doesn't happen overnight. And we have to mature. And that's the reason why he says, make every effort to supplement. That means to grow, to add to, uh, to continue to affectionately um, build on what God has given you. Uh, we have to peel off the layers of ourselves and, and turn to God, be that new creature. Um, you know, it, we have to elevate, that's a good word, elevate these qualities of a divine nature. And we talked about in that first verse, the divine nature, that nature of God over, now you can get this, human nature. Our body, our flesh wants to have human nature. It wants to do the things of this earth. Uh, this world, uh, ourselves, and that's all from Satan and those type things. But a divine nature, we have to supplement it. We have to work at it. And to do that, you have to be resolved. You have to make up your mind. When you go to school or college or a special class of any sort, you have to be determined and resolved to study and to supplement the knowledge in which you have to grow and increase in those areas. Uh, the resolve to grow and show our love to Jesus is ongoing. Just like this, we have to supplement and we'll, uh, and it's gonna continue until we see Jesus and we get our glorified body. But verse eight says this, it says, for if these qualities of yours and are increasing, means they are increasing, they're growing, they're you, you've been learning, you've taken and you, you're, you're, you're reading your Bible, you're listening to teachers. It says they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we're to do. We're to manifest Jesus. We're to show that we know who our Savior is, that we love him. Um, and that is why we have to supplement and keep growing this thing. But it takes a resolve uh, to not let your guard down. Back to uh, verses five and seven, it says five through seven, and these, these things that we saw was faith, uh, virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, and love. Now, those things are the things that we're supposed to supplement to grow and to build on those building blocks. Do you have these qualities? Uh, that's a good report card, if you will. Uh, but there are some that just, they don't care. Like I said, they, they want to be saved and, and they don't want to go to hell. They just want to go to heaven. That's all they care about. But they've never thought about their, their creator, their savior, and their Lord, Jesus. Um, and if you don't have those qualities, verse 9 says this. It says, for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind. And I'm going to stop there. There's a comma. They're nearsighted. Um, all they can see is themselves. All they can see is the things that they want. Uh, that human uh, nature wants to come to the surface. That human nature is all that's important instead of the divine nature. And I have learned that it, by supplementing this growth process and being resolved to 
be more and more and more like Jesus and tell him I love him. Um, it means more than anything. It says that he's nearsighted and he's blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. See, Jesus washes us white as snow, but we need to continue to grow. And, you know, as I, I said, it's Sunday. You know, the Lord watches everything that we do. And, you know, it doesn't cost anything to get saved. It's free. It's by the grace of God that we're saved. Uh, it's not by works. And it's going to cost um, a little bit to follow Jesus. But it's going to cost us everything to serve Jesus. And that's where I want us to be, to be resolved to be servants of the Lord. We'll see this later this week. Uh, but if you have the resolve to be a soldier of Christ and to possess these traits, you can't fail. Um, I'm finding out, and, it, and you know, I've been a Christian many years. I've been a preaching many years. But here's the thing. The more I grow, the more I supplement in all these character traits, um, the more I see that, hey, Christ takes care of me. He, put, he gives me what I need. He protects me, and he gives me the resolve himself, uh, just like he gives me righteousness, he gives me peace, he gives me understanding, all these things, but he gives me what I need that I might not fall or fail. In verse 10, it says, therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. And I believe that's a promise from God. And if we are looking for that divine nature and we're resolved to be more like Christ, it'll bring us um, a lot of things that people struggle with. To live and to re be resolved to serve the Lord, here's what I have found. It brings assurance of eternal life. It brings assurance of your salvation and the power in which God gives us as we started this out Peter telling us he has given us that divine nature and um, that's something you can't take away from us once God has settled in uh, verse 11 says for in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you've heard people say do you know that you know that you know that you know that if you died today you'd go to heaven well if you are resolved to have this divine nature, there will be no shaking that. Your assurance of eternal life, your assurance uh, of the fact that you're the bride of Christ, that as part of the church, we manifest Jesus, that he's going to take care of us. He's going to give us what we need. He's going to uh, He's going to put people in our paths to teach us. He's going to give us scripture to learn and to memorize that we can be resolved to be his bride. Amen. So I pray that you are restraining from the world and you've resolved to follow and to love Jesus. So back to our verse of the day, First Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. And my attitude adjustment is I want to resolve to supplement my character to serve and love my Lord. Amen. I know I covered a lot of ground, but this one passage, uh, go back and underline it and, and read it again and make it yours. Second Peter 1, verses 3 through 11, and see the promises in which the Lord has promised us to give us through his Holy Spirit, through his word, the very power that we need, that divine power. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you promised us so much. and Lord, we just need to be resolved to learn it and to supplement it and to grow it. And Lord, I pray that as we turn our backs on the world and ourselves and Satan, and we, with passionate, loving eyes, look to Jesus, let us love him as he first loved us. Let us resolve in our walk that we instead of looking for human nature would develop and grow in divine nature and that we would be resolved to be a light to be salt jesus is the light he gives us the light 
And we thank you for that. And Jesus said that we are the light, the church. As we accept the free gift of salvation, Lord, you filled us with your Holy Spirit. You indwell us. Let us shine brighter than we ever have. Let us be resolved to show our love to you by being obedient to digging in the word, word and to be obedient as we dig in the word to learn and to be in self-control of the things that we do, all these other traits that we have. Lord, thank you that you love us enough that you give us this responsibility and that you have blessed us I look forward to seeing you face to face one day. And I think it might be very soon, but I pray that you give us the resolve to live our lives, that we might draw others to your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Y'all come back tomorrow. We'll have a good time here. And, uh, you know, get, go back and read this passage again. Like I said, 2 Peter 1, verses 3 through 11. Underline it. Write your notes out. But make sure you resolve yourself to do those things, okay? Y'all take care. Love you.